Good morning, everyone. Hey, it's Rhonda again. I wanted to stop in and give you a few pointers on uh, tips on punch needle today. I know several people are really interested in trying to learn how to do punch needle. So I thought I'd just real quickly show you a couple things that, that have really helped me and i um, always here to share. First of all, here's your punch needle. This is your Cameo Ultra Punch. And this is called the threader. And in order to thread that, what you're going to do, you're going to send that threader all the way down through the needle. And then you will take this thread and you'll put it in the bottom of the needle, like so. And you'll pull that out. And you'll get the thread out of the out of the threader, and then the pull of the needle is here, and you'll stick that threader back through that hole of the needle, and then your thread will come back through the threader, like so. And you'll just pull that needle through, that thread through that needle. Okay, set that aside. And you'll pull that back down and leave yourself about an inch to an inch and a half tail. And as you can see, I was playing around with this already this morning. But here's what I want to show you. I'm self-taught, so all of the books that I looked at and everything that I read and all the illustrations, I always want to show you that your, your thread is coming out the back of your needle, as so. So as I taught myself to punch, I was under the impression that, and kind of the illustration showed me this, that the correct way to punch was that your thread should always come behind your needle like this. And as you can see, you know, that moves along kind of slow. It became very frustrating because when I get to the end here, how am I going to come back? Well, I either have to turn my work or I turn they say, oh, do not turn your needle. Well, I disagree because I'm turning my needle all the time. But I could come back this way, and then you got to get in a weird position to try to bring that punch needle back down in the other direction. And as you can see, this could become very, very frustrating. Or you might, okay, the thread's coming out the back of the needle. Maybe I prefer to work right to left. Again, how do I turn around? Okay. Well, when you're going to stop, I wanted to show you how you, you treat your thread when you, when you stop. You're going to, as you pull that out, you're going to stick your finger right down on your stitches. You see that? And you're going to pull the thread through, which will leave a tail. And then you're going to grab your scissors. If you don't have these kind of flat um, scissors, that's fine. You can use a regular, excuse me, I hit my light. And you're going to come down close, and you're just going to clip. And then we're going to take this tail, and we're going to clip and then you just discard that piece of thread. Well, here's what I've learned through watching videos and, and practice. Matter of fact, Lori Brecklin has a wonderful video and I tried um, watching hers over and over and over and over again and I believe this is something that Lori does as well um, that I kind of picked up from her video. Well, it doesn't have to come out the back. I have found that if your thread comes off to the right side, you can now punch sideways, basically, 
and you can go up and down just like this. As you can see that, I'm going to go slow so that you can watch the process. Now guess what? When I want to come back the other way, it's just simply you move over just a little bit and you can come right back down that same line. By the way, it's my experience that whatever threads you're using, if you want to use the smallest needle possible, I'm going back the opposite direction as you can see there. If you want to use the smallest needle as possible, that the thread will slip through easily because you want to be able to punch your rows as close together as you can. And if you're using a thinner thread and you use too big of a needle, that gets to be pretty difficult to do. Now, you can do a combination because now I am going to go right to left. And that is in the manner of the thread coming out the back. And then you can come back in this way. Coming out the side. We're going to come back up this way. At any point that you want to change directions, oh my, just change directions. This is what makes it so enjoyable, is once you learn that you don't have to go in a straight line or you don't have to, you know, do anything in a particular way, it becomes much more enjoyable. And I, myself, am somewhat of a perfectionist, so when, when I learned that uh, you could do this, it was just amazing to me how much easier it was. And now I'm, I'm here, and I decide, hmm... I should have went here. If you just come in here and you hold your thread right down here, you make a little loop. I can come back over here and just keep working. I don't have to grab my scissors. See that? says, and uh, Lori Brecklin in some of her designs says, leave spaces to fill in with another collar. When you want to do that, you're going to hold here, possibly, and maybe I'm going to come back over here, and I'm going to make a design or a shape that I want here. fill in this section right here. I'll use that another collar. You know, there is no right or wrong way to do this necessarily. You just kind of have to develop your own style and learn as you go. And, you know, welcome all the tips, which I certainly do, and I appreciate all the help that everyone, especially here on this Prim Stitcher Society, everything that, you know, everybody does for each other is just wonderful. So I hope this helps, and if you have any questions, just, you know, give me a shout. And um, I hope this um, gets you on the road with less fear, and um, we're all here to help. Trim this off so you can see. I try to keep things neat and tidy, and I need to try to relax about that a little bit. Just that's my nature. So now I'm just going to show you. I'm going to come over here in the design I'm working on today, and um, just go ahead and do a little punching here. And I'm going to leave a space coming up here. in with a different collar which makes these backgrounds just gorgeous and I don't have my threader around my neck because I was just wanting to make sure that uh, I was able to show you the 
actual punching. Get that out of the way. And one of the things that I love is creating and adding movement. So if I'm going to add what I'm going to call movement, I'm going to turn this just a little bit, and I'm going to punch in a different direction here. Don't be scared. And the thing is, when I first started, oh my gosh, I would punch a little bit and I'd rip it out because it wasn't close enough. Or I'd punch a little bit and I'd, you know, rip it out. I didn't like it. Just remember, you can always go in and fill in. So once I learned that, that relaxes you a little bit too. So as you can see, I'm going to stop here so you can take a look at this off. And if you can see the variation in the movement there, you can see several of them. You know, this house is punched this way, this way, the roof's this way, so it just creates a lot of interest. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed watching today, and I hope that I've helped you in some way, and um, I appreciate you taking the time to watch. I hope you all have a great day. Talk to you soon.